Welcome to Zen. I'm Blasinus, and... Well, this isn't Black Mesa. Not yet. This is actually the original Zen, as it once appeared. Place with an empty void, with tiny platforms, and very imprecise jumps using low gravity, and a long jump that we've never practiced with before. There's a reason, perhaps, why people did not have too many fond memories of the original Zen. But nonetheless, it's something that has to be shown because, well... In order to compare it to what we're about to see, we need to actually get an idea of what Zen once was. It was sort of kind of grungy, inhospitable looking place that pretty clearly doesn't want us here. It's a place that's somewhat eerie, somewhat, well, alien. And yet, there is sort of a sense there that there's a kind of beauty to it. Like, when you consider the state of 90s era graphical processing, Zen would have probably been quite pretty. It's just that, you know, it hasn't really aged that well. You might wonder what it is that I just destroyed there. That'll become apparent very soon. For now... We are kind of stuck on a single, like, floating platform with no apparent path forward, so... What we have to do is get a little bit creative. And this is the end of the first chapter in Zen. Yeah, that's right. The first chapter can be finished in almost three minutes, probably even less if you know what you're doing. Yeah, the uh, Black Mesa version is going to take a little bit longer. Let's just say that. Without any further ado, let us begin. Welcome to Black Mesa's version of Zen. A bit less of a void, wouldn't you say? And yeah, all our weapons are here. Even the snarks. Except I don't ever remember to use them. And right away you see that one of the goals that they had for designing Zen was to actually show the impact of the science team's activities on the planet. You now we're told that they mounted expeditions over here, but there's a whole lot less evidence for it, except for the occasional, maybe like sighting of Black Mesa gear or whatever. But here, yeah, things are a lot more apparent.
overall, they tried to make Zen more... I guess the right word would be majestic. Just a world that is a lot more ethereal and mysterious. Something where you could actually believe that things could have a relatively contented existence here. And what I'm looking at actually is there's an achievement for this first island that we're heading to where it's possible to completely like sidestep it using a series of creative jumps. Yeah. Our new um, long jump here is going to be completely 100% mandatory. So you're going to be seeing a whole lot more horizontal platforming. Like so. The original Zen was actually a low gravity world where not only did you have to learn how to long jump, but you also had to contend with a lot more floaty jumping. And in order to keep people from being doubly confused... Well, also this stuff here, that's healing water. Anyway, in order to keep people from being doubly confused, they ended up making it just ordinary gravity, but with a whole lot more spacing between things. So, I think it's probably a better direction to go in. Like, the low-gravity platforming was honestly kind of tricky and not very precise. And we're going to be seeing more of that in the future. Because, uh, yeah, spoilers, I guess, but... Later games will be having us go back to Zen. And, well, it's going to be regular flavor Zen. Because, yeah... This identity is something the Black Mesa team pretty much came, made up out of whole cloth. I mean, you, you saw the original chapter. There wasn't really a whole lot to work with. So a lot of what they've got here is effectively stuff that is going to be entirely new concepts. Stuff that has no basis in what came before. Although, yes, the bodies lying around with HEV suits, that was in the original. Yeah. I don't know precisely how they figured out that they could lasso a rock floating in space, but they went and did it, those crazy jerks. No idea where all this, like, updraft is coming from, but it's unimportant. When you're doing your air dash in this game, you actually want to do like a quick double tap. Like, logic would suggest that you would want to extend the length of your first jump in order to get the most out of your second boost, but... For whatever reason, um, you get a whole lot more boost if you do it Im immediately, rather than waiting. Now, you saw these things, like the hanging thing that I was shooting at in the original Zen. Yeah, these things... Yeah, they're sort of like alien, like... Sentry... things. Fortunately, all they do is zap our shields, which allows us to see this. Yeah, in addition to the healing pools of water, we also have glowing blue crystals that recharge our batteries, so at least on the healing front, we're going to be okay. Now, you see that cave over there? That's actually something that is a lot more relevant to our top hat run. 
You probably saw it, like, kind of flying off into it, the void as we were going through the portal. Well, here's where it ends up. Same deal with the pizza box. But, well, uh, we already saw that I'm planning on cheating with that, so... Just assume that, like, I'm wearing the hat on my head and the pizza's, like, strapped to my back or something. Like, I'm willing to go through a lot of trouble for this LP, but there's going to be a lot of platforming and lots of opportunities to go just losing the props that you're carrying and have them just drop forever into the void, and yeah, I think this is pretty long already and I'd rather avoid the aggravation of having to do it like two or three times. Because yeah... Just getting it to Zen was only the first part of the prop hunt. And oh yes, everyone is present. Though actually, thanks to these crystal clear, like perfectly clean water, the ichthyosaurs are, are pretty easy to... I don't know what the deal is with the subtitle, don't worry about it. But yeah, the ichthyosaurs are pretty easy to spot. They're meant to be more of a punishment for failing the platforming. But if you're careful, or if you're just prudent, then you can deal with them before you even get yourself dunked. Though obviously the best prevention is not getting dunked at all. Now check this out. Yep. There is... Yet another achievement for using the experimental weaponry in order to kill an ichthyosaur. And, well, it's not really that difficult. Albeit, they're a lot sturdier towards the experimental weaponry than I would have expected, considering that, you know, they go down into crossbow shots. Hmm. I wonder if enemies have a particular, like, damage type weakness thing. That wouldn't shock me too much. There we go. So, we saw these capsules back in the Lambda Labs. Evidently, they were sending these in order to, um, reinforce the expeditions. And, considering that obviously the folks at Zen don't use guns, they're also going to be our only means of replenishing our ammunition during our romp through the place. And, hey, this looks interesting. Sort of like some sort of mobile command center or something. Yeah, there's another achievement for wiping our feet. You just kind of stand there for a bit and use the use key. It's uh, not a biggie. And, uh, yeah, they did mention that the expedition started to get overrun, so, yeah, things aren't looking too good right now. Do you hear that? Oh yes, there's a new type of zombie in town. Meet the HEV zombie. They're like a regular zombie, except they also are accompanied by creepy, you know, HEV warning messages. And I suppose it goes without saying, but those were not in the original game. In fact, this whole um, forward operating base thing here was not in the original game. 
But you see, that's not actually a bad thing. Like, I mean, we saw it. Like, you and I both saw it. The original Zen, the chapter that is, was just a single island. They didn't get, really give them anything to work with. If it, you just tried to keep something that was true to the original, then it would probably just be like an extended platforming sequence, so... Honestly, in this case, invention was the only resort they had. Ah, you can also see the sort of difference in health between the hazard suit zombie and the not hazard suit zombie. Like, they actually do stay up for quite a while after you set them on fire. And here we are about to be introduced to a, do a new, that is, gameplay mechanic. That of inserting crystals within receptacles. Hi, guy. But where is one to find a crystal? Well, it's, I guess it's time to do a little bit of sightseeing. First, yeah, a little bit more lab. Now there is actually something that I think I hearken back to during Questionable Ethics. And that is that one test chamber where you inserted a gas canister into a receptacle in order to gas some head crabs. Yeah, this canister is full of something called a cyanogen. And this stuff, well, yeah, it's another fetch quest. So that's one for the hat, one for the pizza box, and one for the gas canister. And I'm also, yeah, just doing one which is generic because there's an ending where you don't have an item. So that means the pants of time have four legs. And all of them are mutually exclusive with one another, so that's cool. So, can I talk a little bit about the soundtrack as well? Like, I think you heard it a little bit, that sort of ethereal sounding opening, opening theme for Zen. And I really like it. Like, I really do enjoy the music in this part of the game. And actually for most of the game. Um, but here's the thing, is that um, while initially, yes, the layout of Zen makes it look like some kind of like magical fairyland, sort of like Pandora from Avatar, it's also, you know full of dead bodies and everything's trying to kill you. I really don't know if it actually fits or not, but well, we'll see. Okay, let's try this. You're kidding me. All right. Old-fashioned way. Now, I gotta wonder, actually. Um, every time you shoot these guys, like, these sort of, like, energy sparks fly off of them. Is that what people see all the time when they're shooting us? Man, that must be creepy. Just this, like, sparking and sputtering individual charging around, completely heedless of any fire that you send at him. Could you imagine that? Like, being one of those soldiers, like, trying to take down this guy who's just shrugging off all their gunfire. 
And we must have been a real boogeyman to them by the end. I wonder how they're doing over there. I mean, I'm guessing that a whole lot of them didn't actually make it out, so... That was probably one heck of a last stand they made. Now these are some interesting white crystals here. They don't seem to do anything. But they're somewhat interesting, as we'll see later. Or rather, like, kind of white, light blue, you know. Exploding pumpkins. Yeah, that's new as well. Like, basically everything is new. They're this game's equivalent, or, or rather this part of the game's equivalent, to exploding barrels. And, well, they'll often function in exactly the same way. And we've seen all these um, corpses of HEV folks lying around. Um, if we don't have the maximum amount of HEV power, we can steal their battery for a little bit of a boost. I don't know why, but the icon for stealing their battery looks like ammunition for the Magnum. But it doesn't give you any Magnum ammo, so... I don't know. It's kind of weird. Alright now, check this out. You saw how kind of like straightforward and clumsy the... The, um crouch jump was before, like the long jump. Well this, yeah, like you have just so much control in the air, like it is unbelievable. Hey, wait a minute, have they been hunting these things? What is a Mr. Burns? I don't think we've ever seen one of those before, but I'm sure we will. Those things you saw back there, I believe they're just called plants. And yeah, like they're these, these kind of mini tentacles that just swipe at anything that comes close to them. We'll be dealing with them quite a lot as we're going through Zen. And yep. Another lake and probably more ichthyosaurs. Come on out, fellas. Don't be shy. By the way, you see these kind of, like, jelly thingies floating around? Yeah, they're protozoans, and there's an achievement for killing them all. Why do we, do we kill them all when they're completely just 
harmless and just floating around? Well, I don't know. You tell me. There's no reason for it. I mean, I don't even really hate them. It's just, you know, a necessity for an achievement so that people can admire you on the internet. You monster. And there we see the plant at work. They don't really make a lot of noise when they swipe at you. You can die in almost no time at all. So then. Now we've probably seen these giant leaves earlier, but they appear to be closed now. Well, that's got to be foreshadowing for another gameplay mechanic. Yes, we do seem to be running into a whole lot of these, aren't we? Alright, buddies. Yeah, it just goes to show... Wearing a helmet doesn't actually protect you any. Though, who left all these flares around here? Like, these are new. They burn out very quickly, and... Yeah, there they just went. Is someone still alive around here? Or... maybe... Well, this will have to be examined later on, but yeah, it's not a lot of spoilers to say that, yeah, we are receiving help from the outside. So these, um, sort of like lock plants sort of things, that's what I've taken to calling them. Like, they're basically just, like, you have to find their pulsing root there and shoot it in the face, uh, and it opens the way for you. How's about that last theme, though? Like, that sort of, like, merry jungle-type theme. It sort of sounded a bit like... Well, kind of the sort of thing where you sort of expect David Attenborough to narrate or something. I don't know. It's kind of fun, kind of bouncy. But yeah, whenever you see this sort of, like, red vine thing... That means that you need to... How does this even work exactly, outside of it being, you know, a game thing? Like, so it's a plant that gets agitated when you shoot it, and then when you get agitated, it, it turns blue, and it opens up leafy things. It's, you know, it's, it's maybe just not think about it too hard. Ah, and here are the fire hound eyes. Yeah, they're just bombs. They explode in one hit, and if they catch you, then they blow up right in front of your face. Once again, it's sort of like just a game thing. Like, the, the actual, like, real life of a fire hound eye would be very short. Like, I can't imagine them, like, even living past childhood. Hey, now, doesn't that area down there look familiar? Yeah, don't ever fall off ledges. You could lose yourself a lot of progress. Yeah, I see you there. How are these things so sneaky, considering that they're also so loud? I don't get it. The other thing I also don't get is, um... The fire guys were called Mr. Burns. Hmm, I'm gonna have to look up when The Simpsons first aired, because, I don't know, this game's supposed to be set in 1998, so, uh, let me just do a quick search here. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, the first airing was 1989, so it's something that a nerd could actually use as a reference. Now, this whole area here, this whole jungle area... I mean, obviously we've already mentioned how short the original Zen was, but... This sort of feels like a bit like, if you don't mind me saying, a little bit like overcompensation. Like, I'm not saying that it's boring or anything. It does present different challenges each time, but... What we're going to be seeing is a whole lot of sort of like similar... Find the hidden object type puzzles. Where there's going to be an obstruction because of the red vines, so you have to find the source, you have to shoot it, and there you go. And there's going to be something where it's a receptacle for a crystal, so you have to find a crystal and stick it into the receptacle, and then you got to wire it up. You know, actually, when I put it in those terms, it is actually kind of repetitive. But now here we are in a more green area. Well, I guess it was always green, but now we're kind of getting progressively greener. We started off as more of a purple land, and now we're getting back to the original color tone of the, like, original Zen, where, yeah, it was kind of a pale void in a, in a green area. This looks interesting. Yeah, sometimes in order to progress, you're going to need to uh, destroy not one, but two roots. And perhaps more besides. Now, I'm not going to say that... It, like, I'm kind of harping on this over and over again, but... Yeah, I'm not going to say that adding more details is a bad thing. Like, obviously, like if you've got a real passion for something and you want to make it the best it can be, then clearly like you'll want to put all your ideas into it, but... I don't know. There's sort of a, a point where, like, there is something to be said for brevity. Like, yeah, Zen was disappointing as a last level because the individual chapters sort of felt like you hardly spent any time in Zen at all, despite it being hyped up as the big end point of the game. But consider everything that's sort of come before. Like all the fighting through soldiers, through dilapidated laboratories. And... Yeah, we've effectively entered into a completely new genre of game. I mean, all the basic elements are still there, but... If it wasn't for finding, like, inexplicable ammo drops... We'd be effectively, I don't know, playing some sort of game called... I don't know, like, Dinosaur Planet or something. Like, yeah, like, the platforming was terrible. That it, I cannot deny. The original Zen was absolutely horrible, having to equate you with the, both the long jump and... What? Okay, these are our trip mines. Like, soldiers didn't do this. Some scientist rigged up all these explosives next to all these pumpkins, and yes, if we trip one of these, we will die. Like, no questions about it. Like, what kind of twisted individual did this? And for what purpose? 
Like, why is this sequence even existing? I mean, except as a game thing. Like... Can you imagine, like, what scenario would have resulted in this in a logical world that doesn't follow video game rules? Like, what kind of experiment were we running here? Like, the effects of... explosives on... fleshy things? Like, we've established this before, but these aliens are kind of short. Most of these trip mines are at human height. I don't get this. I don't get this at all. Hmm. And here's the thing. Um, yeah, this is sort of like a series of obstacles all leading to a, a single, I guess you can call it, a door. Yeah, like, this door made out of leaves is comprised of three separate locks, each with their own different trial. Is it four? You know, honestly, like I did this just a few days ago and even I forget just precisely what is in this section. Like, there is something to be said for laboratory segments that they're a whole lot more memorable than, well, all this stuff. Like, yeah, it wouldn't look right without all the foliage, but no one's actually going to remember, like, oh yeah, we were in that place with all the mushrooms. Because, you know, every place has all the mushrooms. I'm not trying to be critical here, like, not trying to dump on the efforts of the Crowbar Collective, but it does feel like, after a certain point, things can be over-designed. That, um... In a sense, like, for folks who've trekked through the entirety of the rest of the game, and they, they want to get to the final boss, in a sense, this is sort of like, like a huge grindy obstacle in their path. By the way, if you hear hound eyes, it's because there are a bunch of them down there in case we ever slip and fall. There's really no point to going down there otherwise, it is just a penalty for our mistake. Oh, and um, another thing I forgot to mention about the long jump module. No falling damage. Yeah, like, that's something that's very important. The original Zen, as we saw, would penalize you if you fell a long distance, and that just made the platforming even more aggravating. But here, everything is... yeah. Like, you don't get penalized for falling no matter how far you fall. And that, I think, is very phenomenal. That is a change that I can get behind. Honestly, though, like... 
some of the sophistication is actually supported by the original, like, source material, like the concept art for Zen, that obviously wasn't realized in the game itself, showed Zen as a sort of, like, otherworldly alien place with all sorts of strange flora and, uh, and fauna, and uh, technology that seems, like, semi-futuristic, but also has a sort of, like, organic bent to it. Where, like, everything seems alive. That's basically how I could put it. That uh, all the, the technology feels like it's designed for things that are just really full of, like, life to them. Like, really, like, crystalline and things like that. Not really into the whole, like, unfeeling metal and stuff, but more... Yeah. It's, it's all about the sort of, yeah, like, uh, natural architecture. And we'll see some more of that as we progress. Yep. Chapter 1 is still not over.